All right, welcome everybody to Brioche Simplified. My name is Dana Neald. I'm the editor of Fave Crafts and I will be emceeing today's class with Molly Conroy. Uh, for those who don't know, Fave Crafts is a website that shares free craft tutorials from all over the internet. And we have a variety of free email newsletters broken out by interest like Easy Does Knit, um, All Free Knitting is one of our sister sites and they have a newsletter that goes out every day and many more newsletters. You can sign up for any of our free newsletters at Fave Crafts. We are, a few housekeeping things. We are recording the class today and we are gonna email the recording out tomorrow. So keep an eye for an email from Fave Crafts via Zoom with a link to that recording in about 24 hours. And then you can either use the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask questions or you can drop it in the chat, any questions. The chat moves a little more quickly, so, um, might be a little harder to catch everything. We'll do our best to, to answer your questions throughout. And then, yeah, today's class is one hour. I think that's everything for the housekeeping. And thank you so much to the Hands-On Knitting Center for sponsoring today's class. Today's, today's class is taught by Molly Conroy of the Hands-On Knitting Center. Molly is a partner in Hands-On Knitting Center, a 12-year-old local yarn store in Redlands, California. She has been knitting for 16 years. HOKC is an inviting store with a large table in the middle where all are welcome to bring projects in and get help for free anytime. This atmosphere means that we fix a lot of knitting and do a lot of teaching. The experience led Molly to look for ways to simplify the teaching of seemingly complex knitting techniques. She teaches for HOKC both online and in store and has taught for stitches and many local guilds. Um, HOKC's event Yarnival is here. Happy birthday to HOKC. To celebrate the nation's birthday and theirs, join them all month for classes on crochet, knitting, embroidery, and weaving. The HOKC has basic and advanced classes. All online classes will be recorded and the students will have access to the recordings for a minimum of two weeks and up to 30 days. You can get all the details at handsonknittingcenter.com slash blog and I'll drop that link in the chat as well. All right, and with that, um, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and Molly, feel free to uh, to take over. Um, thank you. I just wanna say thank you so much, uh, Dana, to, for having us. This is was an incredibly kind outreach um, to our community and I greatly appreciate it. Um, and I'm just super happy to be here. So uh, uh, brioche is one of my favorite topics to teach because it is one of those mystifying uh, things to people but honestly, I'm just gonna tell you right now, what complicates brioche is the language. So if you have tried brioche and failed in the past, my first thing I want you to do is just erase your memory. Literally forget everything you've learned about brioche before because the language has made it harder than it really has to be. And we're gonna go ahead and simplify the whole process. Now we're gonna do this pretty fast. So if you're a quick um, student, hang out with me and give it a try. If not, just try it. If you get stuck, put your stuff down, watch it, and then go back to the recording where you can try it again at a slower pace and feel really, really confident. Um, and remember, it is okay to be a student. Uh, so please don't worry about that. I'm going to pin my hands so that we can see. Okay. So the first thing is you have two um, handouts from me. You have one that is a pattern for these little makeup removers that we're going to make, right? Or little itty bitty um, face cloths. And what I want you to do with that is just put it aside. We're not even going to look at it. We're gonna work the entire pattern um, straight from this rules from for brioche land, and we're gonna focus on this first. The first thing we're gonna do is one color or single color brioche, because honestly, that's super, super easy. I'm gonna cover the rules for brioche land. I'm gonna tell you right now that it's a little tongue in cheek. I mean, absolutely no offense, but I think it's easier to remember things when they're slightly funny. Um, and so I've done that. Okay, so at its core, brioche is a knit one, pearl one rib, right? So you can see your knit stitches, you can see your purl stitches, knit stitches, and purl stitches. Um, if you can knit one and purl one, you can do brioche. Uh, and you do want to remember, like when you're doing more advanced things, because it's a knit one, purl one rib, everything has to be done like in, in, in groups so that you can make sure you're doing increases and decreases to keep that in pattern. Okay, number two, in one color brioche, you will never purl. This always makes me very excited because for a long time, I didn't love purling. Uh, you will only ever knit your knit stitches and then you'll flip your purl stitches, uh, giving them a little buddy. Brioche is a serial monogamist, right? So if the stitch is by itself, get a little closer there. There we go. 
if the stitch is by itself, it's going to get a buddy. If the stitch already has a buddy, it's going to get married. And divorce is illegal in brioche land. So once you are buddied, you are never going to separate. You are never going to change partners. Um, and the fact they're so much the same one that they're even considered one stitch. Okay. In single color brioche, we're going to be turning at the end of every row, um, but it takes two rows of knitting to create one row of brioche. Um, and then it's totally and completely reversible. So if you are working on a pattern where right side and wrong side matters, I highly recommend going ahead and plunking a stitch marker in on the right side to remind yourself that that is the right side. If you do a long tailed cast on, which is one of our most common cast ons, you can also remember that where the working yarn and the tail are on the same side, that's always gonna be your right side row. Okay, one other really important thing. Um, for this, if you're gonna work along with me, you're always going to knit the first stitch and slip the last stitch with the yarn in front. Those are our selvage stitches. Those are the only stitches that may um, be a, uh, uh, an exception to our other rules that we've done. All right, if we're in single color brioche, we can use single pointed needles which is what I have here, but just know that's only for single color. I'm gonna demonstrate both in um, continental knitting and in throwing. Continental is what I do uh, naturally, so I'm just gonna start there. So our first stitch, which is a selvage stitch, we're always just gonna knit, okay? Then I see a knit stitch. So if I see a knit stitch, I'm gonna knit it. And if I see a purl stitch, I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front and I'm gonna slip that stitch with the yarn in front but I'm taking the yarn all the way over the needle to make a yarn over to knit my next stitch. And then I bring my yarn to the front and I slip that stitch, giving it a yarn over and knit my next stitch. So when you look back, you're going to see single stitches and paired stitches, right? Single stitches and paired stitches. Just switch the way I knit real quick for those of you that throw or that, uh, yep, throw. Okay, so um, I've knit my stitch. So I'm gonna bring my yarn forward slip that next stitch. And anytime um, somebody says slip in knitting, it will always mean slip purl wise unless you're doing a decrease or otherwise instructed. So in brioche, all of that slipping is purl wise. So bring my yarn forward, slip that next stitch and knit the next one. The most common, and I'm not a thrower as you can tell, so sorry. Um, the most common mistake that you're gonna make right at the get-go on this is to, uh, when we normally bring our yarn forward and slip, we are used to and have trained ourselves to take the yarn to the back between the needles, right? Um, because that's how we would do it in, in uh, mosaics, in stranded knitting and anything like that. So from time to time, look back at your knitting and make sure that you have single stitches followed by cross stitches or double stitches, right? Single, double. And if you have single, 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 that means you're taking your yarn to the back between the needles and not over the needle. So really important coming over. And you'll notice that I put my index finger on that stitch to hold them together because it's a little easier as you're working, especially in single color brioche, to have those stitches cross over. If you bring your yarn forward and, uh, and then slip your stitch and have them side, to side by side, it's easier for that yarn over to migrate to the wrong stitch. So keep them together. The other thing is you're bringing your yarn forward before you slip your stitch. If you make a yarn over and then slip your stitch and then yarn over, you end up with this really crazy kind of curl, curl, and then stitch. And that is also wrong. I'm just showing you some of the things you might be doing wrong. Uh, just to make sure we're going well, since we don't have a ton of time. Okay, very last stitch. This is really, really important when you get to those last two. You're gonna bring your yarn forward. You're gonna give that last stitch a yarn over, right? But you need to bring it all the way forward to drop it in the front and you slip that last stitch with your yarn in front. Looking back, you're gonna see single stitches and double stitches all the way across and you're just gonna turn your work. And now here the fun thing is, you're gonna do exactly the same thing. Remember, we always knit our first stitch regardless, because that's a selvage stitch. And then we're gonna just knit the knits. And this is also um, where we get to realize we will only ever work the stitches that are doubled up. So we're gonna knit our double stitches. And when we get to a single stitch, it gets a buddy. And then we're gonna knit together our buddied stitches. And we see a single stitch and it gets a buddy. 
and then we're going to knit together our buddied stitches. We see a single stitch and it gets a buddy. So buddied stitches get married, single stitches go on dates, and buddy stitches get married, and single stitches go on dates. Right, and all the way across. So let me switch again. Okay, if we have any questions, please feel free to ask. This is actually, I think, um, single color brioche is one of the easiest things you'll do. It is, however, a little challenging to fix. And so that tends to be the biggest problem that we have. Single, when you get down to the end, remember, and my last um, stitch I'm going to work in my brioche pattern is a, as a purl stitch, a single stitch. So it gets a buddy, but in order for that yarn over to stay, I have to bring the yarn all the way around and leave it. And then I'm going to slip that last stitch. And Dana, I'm not reading the chat at all. So if you're seeing anything there that I need to know, please let me know about that. Okay, and then we're just doing the same thing. So this is it, this is as easy as it gets. This was also called Fisherman's Rib. The same exact look can be achieved with knit one below. And I'm gonna just do one more row and then I'll show you just a little troubleshooting. Okay, so we're Oh, Go sorry, ahead. Molly. Um, I was just gonna say that so far folks are like, oh, I won't forget the, the marriage and dating um, language is really, really helpful. Yes, good, 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 good. I think that's all that is, right? So single stitches get go on a date, couples get married. Singles go on a date, couples get married. And the only exceptions to this, of course, are our very first and last stitch, which are selvage stitches. Every pattern will have a different thing that you do with selvage stitches, so really, really pay attention to that. Um, and that's the only thing. And because we're working them only once every other stitch, we get this really nice sort of pretty braided look on it. Okay, so let's talk about what happens and go to a little bit bigger yarn. What happens if you make a mistake? How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing good. I told you it was simple stuff, right? Make sure I'm in the middle. Okay, so if we're zipping along and we're doing our stuff, um, what, you know, what are the things that can go wrong? So first of all, my biggest habit ever is instead of doing a yarn over on that pearl, I will sometimes work a pearl. Right, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna do a couple of them right and get down to the end. Okay. So this is right. So now put your stuff down and just sort of sort of like watch for a second. I'm just going to show you some that go wrong. So oftentimes you'll work some as pearls, right? Or you will do your yarn over and you'll forget and you'll take it around the needle. Right? And you might work one as a pearl. And then maybe you're totally not thinking and you leave your yarn in back and you slip that stitch. And then you leave your yarn in front and you slip that stitch. I'll work this correctly. Let's pop that through. Okay. So now there are times you're gonna you you will get to your brioche and you're gonna find like a whole slew of single stitches. And when you see that, you know it's gone wrong. Now you could rip the row, but instead of ripping, I like to go ahead and see if I could just fix them as I go, because for the most part you can't. I will say that that brioche, once you get used to it, this is TV knitting, you guys. This is this is knit night knitting. And if you understand the sort of structure of it, it makes it really easy to fix it. Okay, so we're gonna, this is called Buddy Retrieval 101. Um, and by the way, this has uh, in your handout, um, I have pictures of how to do this stuff and find it. So um, don't stress too much about it if you're, if, you're not, if you're not seeing it right away. Okay, so any time, um, I, well, when I get to my single pearl stitches, I know I'm just going to slide those and give them a buddy, right? That's an easy, easy thing. But anytime I get to a knit stitch, my knit stitches have to have a buddy, okay? So if the buddy is not on the needle, the buddy is somewhere. It still exists, right? Because it's, it's that, that connection between our stitches. So if the first thing you want to do is rotate your yarn toward you. I'm going to turn mine around so you can really see it. And when you look at this, you have this bar that goes across and that's sitting on top of the pearl bump from the, from the row before. Hoping everybody can see that. The bar that sits there sits on top of the pearl bump. That bar is the buddy. 
Now the bunny's a little short because we slipped it, but all we have to do is reach down. I'm gonna show you from the front, make sure I'm in screen. Reach down, find that top little bar, hunker up onto the needle, and now you have your buddy and your stitch. And so now I can just go ahead, I'm gonna maintain my yarn over and knit those two together, all right? Do my yarn over. This one, I can see my buddy fell in front. Can you see it right there? So if it fell off to the front, in some ways it's easier. I'm gonna slip that stitch, dip down, pick up the buddy and move them both back. By slipping the stitch and picking up the buddy, I'm keeping them oriented to where I can really easily knit the two. If I pick the buddy up and put it up, one's on backwards and one's on forward. So I'm gonna slip in, dip down, put it on, put it on, work them together. Is this helpful to see a little bit of the troubleshooting? Okay, great, thanks, Joanne. All right, so now if I turn it around and I'm like, there's no buddy, and there's no buddy, right? And you'd be like, Molly totally lied to me. She said a buddy has to exist. It really does. The buddy, this time, this is where you worked the purl stitch instead of carrying the yarn over. So in reality, the buddy is inside. So I took that stitch off, I'm holding onto it, and I took that one bar out and I'm putting them both back up on my needle. Let me show you that one more time. It's gonna look like this when you get there, okay? If you don't see a strand on the front or on the back, it means you worked the stitch instead of slipping it. So I'm gonna take that little buddy, that little stitch off. I'm gonna pull out the top bar only, and I'm gonna put bar and stitch back up on my needle and work them together, right? My next one gets buddy. Buddy retrieval again, 101 on the back side. Plop that puppy up and knit it. Give my single stitch a buddy. Check out what went wrong here. No buddy on that side. No floaty on this side. Means I worked the stitch. And I'm telling you, I am really good at this one because that is my, if I get to talking and get to doing stuff, it's just a real habit to, to, um, to knit that stitch for me. Okay, or pearl the stitch rather. All right, and get a buddy, and then we're good. Okay, and remember that last, the first and last stitches are always the worst, the, the last, this last one is one, the one that really gives you a hard time. So remember, you're going to slip that stitch and drop the yarn all the way in front. If you forget to do that and you leave the yarn in back, when you turn your work, you're gonna look at it and say, wait a second, that first stitch is a knit stitch and it should have a buddy. The problem can happen if you're not really paying attention to the stitches below and not really looking at it. If, you, if you're not seeing that, then you could decide to give this single stitch a buddy and that gets you off all the way across. So your, your knit stitches are always the ones that have the buddies and your purl stitches are always the ones that are single. So when you're also first starting this, make sure you're working on kind of a lighter color where you can really see your stitches. And that's why in your instructions, I have you knit two to four rows of um, one by one rib. So it gives you, even from the get-go, it gives you the ability to see it. If you wanna make these little squares, right, for after, well, after you're done with all of this, feel free to skip that, you know, once you know what, what you're doing and they'll be squarer and less sort of balloony um, for that. Okay, so if this happens, what you're going to do is just move, I like to turn my work, I think it's probably the easiest. I'm just gonna slip that stitch over, um, that end stitch out of the way, grab my yarn, come all the way over, drop it back to the front, move that stitch back and I'm good to go. And I'm back to just doing the exact same thing. So I'm gonna work one more row normally. And then I think we're gonna be really good and on track. Okay, married stitches. So our our uh, double stitches get married, single stitches go on a date. Double stitches get married, single stitches go on a date, right? So our buddies that exist from the row before, they get married, they stay married. They don't ever get to separate. Our singles go on a date. Buddies 
get married. And that's really all you have to remember for single color brioche. Um, brioche is a totally reversible, super lofty, super squishy, fabulous, yummy fabric. Um, so it is great for things like washcloths. It's great for things like pillows. It's fabulous for, um, for blankets, right? So you can, something crazy there. Um, so you can uh, um, just think of it as like really pretty stuff. It's really fun when you work like a, a variegated yarn or a self-striping yarn um, because it does, uh, a, those yarns will do a lot of the work for you. This same exact um, little piece done in a, in a self-striping cotton, right? Makes it look like you've been changing colors, but you haven't. So it's just a really, really fun, super squishy, super lofty. It does eat up yarn because remember it takes two rows of knitting to get one row of um, brioche. Um, so it eats up yarn and you're always going to be working on quite a smaller needle than usual. So our uh, worsted weight, we're on a size four needle. You could even do this on a, a three um, to have it a little bit more dense when normally with this yarn, I'd be on a six or a seven uh, for like sweater knitting, a, a six for this yarn for sweater knitting. So it's quite a bit smaller needles because as you work it, that yarn ends up really, really lofty and really wide. Okay, um, I am at a really good stopping spot, Dana. I can either co cover the rules for um, two color or you can, we can do our intermission. What would you like? Oh, my needles are signature needles, which are my favorite. And the Thank yarn you. that I'm using is Pima, Pima Cotton from uh, Barocco. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm happy to do an intermission right now, because even if we, you know, breeze through two color brioche, then there's time for more questions at the end. And, and that's great. So the two color takes longer. OK, OK, fantastic. Then, yes, I'll jump right into the intermission. So if folks want to keep practicing, um, go get a glass of water, whatever. I will be talking for a couple minutes about our upcoming classes and um, our digital magazine. I like knitting. So we've got one class on the docket for next week, actually. So a week from today, same time uh, for vintage shell stitch. So that's a crochet class. And I'll be teaching that one. Um, so sign up if you are also a crocheter. And you can sign up for any of our upcoming classes at favecrafts.eventbrite.com. I'll drop that link in the chat. And then an offer that we make to, to everybody who attends any of our classes is if you are a new subscriber um, and you've never heard of, never signed up for our digital magazines, we have ilikeknitting.com, ilikecrochet.com, and we like sewing.com. And so um, if you sign up for the, the magazines, if you're a new subscriber, you get access. It's a digital magazine in crochet or knitting or sewing. And when you sign up, you get access to the six digital issues that are published each year. And you also get access to all of the previously published patterns because it's an entirely digital magazine. The codes to sign up for any of those magazines are I like knitting.com slash virtual 23 or I like crochet.com. We like sewing slash virtual 23. I will drop all of those links in the chat. And so, yeah, all right. That that's all that I have to say about upcoming classes and our digital magazines. Awesome. Thank you. I want to take the crochet class. That I would love good. it if you came. <laughs> that would be great. I'm going to do it. I'm a, I'm a newer crocheter. I actually learned to knit and crochet the same week, but knitting totally stole my heart. Um, and uh, But in the last, like, I don't know, last five years, the crochet patterns are amazing. So, uh, okay. So one, the difference, there, there are quite a few differences between one and two color uh, uh, brioche, I mean, obviously beyond just the color, but the complexity in the stitch increases greatly. So what I'm going to say is, I would strongly recommend just making one entire little piece um, in uh, the one color brioche. And if you feel like you've got it down, then pop right onto a two color. If you're making mistakes and you don't have the rhythm, make another one, right? And really get the rhythm down because that is a big part of brioche is sort of having that muscle memory built in um, to not make the mistakes. So when you go to two color, it's gonna be that much easier. Okay, so here, we're gonna do our rules. So in um, two color brioche, there is not a right side or a wrong side. It is considered a light side and a dark side, okay? 
the light side is, is defined by the side where the light color has knit stitches. The dark side is defined by the dark side that has knit stitches, okay? And, um, and then in a two color brioche, opposites attract. So we're gonna be doing the same sort of motion, but you're gonna see that your buddied stitches are always of the opposite color. Divorce is still illegal in brioche land, right? And when you're counting your stitches, if you wanted to count and make sure you had all the stitches that you needed, you will count your single stitches as one and you will count your double stitches as one, right? So this is one, two, three, four stitches. Anytime they say, anytime you are directed to do anything with this double stitch, it includes both strands of that stitch. They are never separating. Uh, uh, two color brioche is uber egalitarian. So when you're looking to see what color am I supposed to work next, you will always work the least represented color. So if you look here, we are two to one tan to yellow, right? And so I would immediately know when I'm gonna work this next row, I'm gonna work yellow because I will work the least represented color. Um, each, uh, each row of uh, brioche is worked twice. So we're in single color brioche. We were able to do that on a single pointed needle, right? Which was super fun. In two color brioche, you must be on DPNs or on um, uh, circular needles. You have to be able to slide your stitches back and forth. You, I will say that you cannot do it on single points. You could, but you are then slipping every single stitch and the, the chance of disaster is greatly enhanced. So don't do it on a single point. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. Okay. Um, and then um, do, do, do. Uh, how to tell where you are in the pattern. I'm gonna cover this as we go through, but just, just sort of to see when you have your two strands on opposite sides like this, then you know that you are halfway through one row. When the two working strands are on the same side, you will have finished one side of your work. Of, of your work. Okay, all right. I'm gonna leave that for right now. The one other thing that you have to know if you're doing this with me is that your edge stitches are going to be handled a little bit differently. Uh, in two color brioche in this pattern, our edge stitches will only be worked in the dark color. So if we're not working the dark color, we will not work those stitches, but it will be the same way we did it last time, which is we will knit the first stitch and slip the last stitch with the yarn in front. Your dark color yarn will always drop to the front and your light color yarn will always drop to the back. All right, let's get into this. If you're ready, get that out of the way. Okay, here we go. All right, so I've got my blue is my dark color. And my little tan color is my light color. And because I'm going to work this first row in light color, I'm going to slip that first stitch. Okay, so that's just gonna get out of the way. Then if we'll remember um, from our last one, we are gonna do exactly what we did before. So if it's a knit stitch, I'm going to knit it. This is a setup row, okay? Because this is the only time we ever work individual stitches is on this setup row. So I'm gonna knit my knit stitch and I'm gonna pop over to my purl stitch and give it a buddy. So this should look super familiar. The only thing that is different here from what we did in single color is when we give a buddy, the buddy is always the opposite color. Remember opposites attract. So our purl stitches get a buddy of the opposite color. And because I've already shown this in throwing, I'm just gonna get us through this little, this little row and I'll, I'll go back and forth again a, a bit here in a second. Um, and then remember our, our uh, last stitch, we're going to knit right on this one because this has one extra stitch. And then our light color drops to the back. So I'm gonna slip that last stitch with my yarn in back. Now, I have that done. My two yarns are on opposite sides, right? So I know I've only worked the first pass on this side. So at this point, I'm going to slide my stitches back to the other end and I'm gonna pick up my dark color, but not my dark tail. There we go. Okay, because this is my dark color, I will work my edge stitches in my dark color. So now I'm gonna knit my edge stitch. All right, guys, here's the big change up. 
We haven't done any purling at all so far, right? But now we're going to work the purl stitches on this front side. So our knit stitches on this side will be um, will be the, uh, the um, uh, light color, that's what I'm searching for, and our purl stitches will be the dark color. So I have a single knit stitch, so I'm gonna slip it and give it a buddy. Now my next stitch is a purl stitch. And because my next stitch is a purl stitch, that means my yarn has to come all the way to the front in order for me to, to work that next stitch. So let me just say that again real quick. Let me switch these sides. I'm just uh, getting my yarn tensioned, not off the screen. Okay, ready? So this is an, a single knit stitch. So my single stitches get buddies. Because my next stitch is a purl stitch, that yarn has to come all the way back to the front in order for me to purl the two stitches together. So I'm purling together or marrying my buddied stitches from the previous um, pass. My individual, my yarn's already in the front. So I'm gonna slip that stitch, bring the yarn all the way over to the front and purl that next group together. Let me switch the way I'm working. My yarn's already in front. So I'm gonna slip that next knit stitch. My single stitches get slipped. Bring the yarn forward and I'm going to purl together or marry my individuals. Slip my single, take the yarn all the way over and back to the front and work together those two purl stitches. Slip my single, bring the yarn all the way over and back to the front and work those two purl stitches together. Okay, one of the other crazy things about brioche is for the first inch, it looks like you're doing it wrong. It looks like poo uh, and it's super frustrating. It's really, really pretty once you have about an inch in, but the first inch is super confusing. Okay, I'm down to the end. I have my dark color. I have a single um, stitch in my opposite color. So this one needs to get a buddy in my dark color. So that's going to, my yarn is forward already, come over all the way back to the front and I'm gonna drop my dark color to the front. Flip that last stitch. And now, because both of my working yarns are on the same side, I know I'm done with that row. And so now I will just turn my, my work just as I would normally turn my work, okay? So take a look at it. And which color is least represented? Right, I've got lots of blues compared to a little bit of white. So since I'm a two to one blue, I know I'm gonna work my white color. My white color is a light color. So this yarn is gonna remain in front while I slip this first stitch out of the way. And let me show you why. Because if I take that yarn to the back, I'm gonna wrap my edge, right? So this yarn will stay in the front while I slip that first stitch out of my way. And now I'm setting up. And I can tell that my First stitch is a purl stitch, right? Because I can look below and be my next stitch is a knit and they're always every other. So if my first one is a purl stitch, I'm gonna come in and purl those two together. And now my single stitches are knit stitches and this should sound pretty familiar because you're actually doing exactly what you did on the previous row, just in opposite colors. So I'm gonna take my yarn all the way over my, my um, single stitch back to the front to purl together or marry my double stitches. It's still the same thing. Single stitches get buddies. Buddied stitches get worked in pattern. Single stitches get buddies. Buddied stitches get married. Single stitches get buddies. Buddied stitches get married. And you're always going to be working them in pattern. Where your yarn ends up when you slip those stitches depends on whether or not your next stitch is a knit stitch or your next stitch is a purl stitch. And, and so don't overthink it. I've seen people write down every step of this stuff. Don't overthink it. It doesn't need overthinking. Light color drops to the back and I'm gonna slip my, my last stitch. Okay. There's a little yarn management that goes on in two color brioche for sure. My, uh, my working yarn and working yarn are on two opposite sides. When they're on those two opposite sides, that means I've worked only one pass on this side and I will slip my stitches. 
So there are two things that you that can kind of help you with this a little bit. If I wasn't thinking and I just turned my work, right? I know I need to work blue because again, my least represented color is blue. And up here at the front where I'm ready to work is my white color. So I can immediately say, oops, I turned too early and just turn back. So don't, you know, again, don't stress too much. Um, brioche really talks to you when you can read your knitting in brioche, brioche is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Until you can read your knitting, it's a bit, it's a bit mysterious. Um, so really spend that time really paying attention to your knit columns, your purl columns, right? What your stitches are doing, all of that. Okay, so now we are now on our dark side, which will make more sense later, but I'm in my dark color. I'm gonna knit my selvage stitch because I'm in my dark color. I see a purl stitch here that's a single, so that's gonna get slipped with a buddy. And now because my next stitches are knit, I don't have to come all the way forward again. I'm just doing a normal yarn over. But my yarn is in the back, so I have to bring my yarn forward to get that yarn over. And then I'm, in, then I'm doing the same thing, right? Single stitches get buddies, buddied stitches get married. Single stitches get buddies, buddied stitches get married. Super duper easy peasy lemon squeezy. Joanne is asking, she says, you didn't flip, you just went back to the beginning. Correct. So if the two yarns are on two opposite sides, you slip your stitches, uh, right? And I'm on very short uh, DPN, so I don't have to do a ton. Let me just do this really, this last stitch really fast, just to make sure we're all, all clear, because those always cause confusion. I'm in my dark yarn, so I'm going to bring my yarn forward and drop it all the way to the front to slip that last stitch. Okay, so... In deciding if you're going to turn your work or slide your work, it all depends on where your yarns are, right? So if both of my yarns are on the same side, that means I worked both passes on this side and now I'm ready to turn my work. If I had a working yarn here and a working yarn here, that means I've only worked one half of it and I slide my stitches back. Okay. How are we doing? Is it making sense to people? Are we doing all right? Got lots of positive comments that they're, you know, they're so excited to have a go at this. Um, cool. So that's great. Anne Marie is asking, she's left-handed and cannot grasp two-color brioche. Any hints for, for left-handed? Oh boy. Um, it, uh, so I will tell you um, that in our store with left-handed people and my mother being one of them, we strongly, strongly recommend that they learn right-handed. And it's because you use both hands, right, in knitting. Uh, and um, and so we, we really do that because otherwise you're doing everything backwards. But if you're truly a left-handed knitter and you knit left-handed and rock on, that means you are super smart and I so appreciate you. I would go to a, a local yarn shop um, or, or find somebody who knows brioche and sit across from them and just watch what they're doing where it's backwards, where it makes sense. If you don't have a local yarn shop and that sort of thing isn't gonna work, we do um, free uh, drop-in help on Zoom every Tuesday. You go onto our um, website and make an appointment. Uh, and I would be super happy uh, to work with you on that. And I would have to play with it a little bit to figure out how to do it left-handed. I'm just gonna, I'll be honest with you. Um, so I don't have any advice for you right at the moment other than that really not helpful advice. Um, but I would, I would go there first. And then if I can be of assistance to you, it would be my absolute pleasure. Okay. Uh, I'm could just, just want to cover this one more time. I think we're good on time. So, oh yeah, we're good. Okay. So when we're looking at this, you can see again, our least represented color is the, is the light color. So we're always going to work our least represented color because, um, two color brioche is uber egalitarian. So I'm going to grab my light color. And I'm gonna make sure that it stays in the front while I move my first selvage stitch out of the way, okay? Then I'm gonna grab my yarn and I'm going, in fact, I'll do this throwing this time just to sort of help out with that. Okay, grab my yarn and then now my first stitch is a knit stitch and it's doubled. And because it's a knit stitch and it's doubled, I'm gonna pop in here and work that stitch. Then I'm bringing my yarn Ah, 
bringing my yarn forward, it's always so awkward to see people uh, knit the way they don't normally knit, right? And because my next stitch is a knit stitch, I'm coming in here and I'm just crossing that over, right? And coming in, hopping in and working that stitch. And I'm gonna bring my yarn forward and I'm gonna slip that next stitch and it gets a buddy by keeping my yarn in the front, crossing over that buddy and knitting those stitches. Okay, did we have some more questions, Dana? There's a couple good ones. Um, let's see, Joanne is asking, do you suggest cotton yarn as a first try? So um, I would say that you have this little pattern, right? Which is pretty simple, but just grab anything. It doesn't matter, right? Even it's not a ton of yarn, grab some waist yarn and just try it. Cotton um, can be, if you wanna make something that's useful, cotton is super helpful for this. Uh, cotton can be a little bit more challenging for people to work with, um, but uh, because it's a little less forgiving. But on the other hand, you're making something that removes makeup um, or dirt. So who cares? Um, uh, so your stitches won't be as perfect as if you use like merino wool. So if you have a little extra merino wool in your in your stash that you have nothing to do with, grab some of that and you're totally good to go. And at the end, I worked that last stitch. Remember my light color drops to the back as I slip that last stitch. So I guess my real answer to you is work with the yarn that you're most comfortable with, right? And, and if you're, if you, you can turn this exact same thing into like a little uh, coffee rug, uh, a coffee, yeah, a little mug rug sort of thing. Um, and so, and wool would work really well for that. Acrylic would probably be my least favorite um, of all of the yarns for this, um, unless you have a really nice acrylic that has good stretch. So I would not pull out my like my super saver for this um, because it doesn't have any give, but like some of the, you know, Karen Simply Soft, that sort of thing has a little bit of um, elasticity to it. You can do that. So a yarn with a little elasticity is going to be your buddy. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, Jude, or let's see, Wendy says she's a little confused about the homework because she's asking, weren't we supposed to start a couple rows each with light and dark? Yeah, so there were two, there were two little samples that you could do. The first sample sets you up to do the single color, right? And so you had two rows of ribbing and then you would pop right in and that was this one, right? So you're popping right in to doing the single color brioche. Your other homework was to um, start with two to four rows of the dark color and that gets you ready to do the two color um, brioche. And that's that's what the homework was for. It'll, it would do uh, the two different ones. So your light color start is your single color brioche and your dark color start is your two color brioche. So I hope that helps. Awesome. Thank you. And that, actually a couple, do we have time for a couple more questions? Yeah, so we're we're good, right? It's 945. And I, I just want to show, I want to get into the pattern as the only other thing I want to do. And maybe just a tiny troubleshooting here, but feel free. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious, do you guys sell the signature needles at your shop? We do. Um, we do sell signature needles. We're in fact, we are about to, we've had them on consignment for a long time. Um, and I think we're keeping them for only one more month. So pop onto our website and you can find them. I will tell you that they are they are very expensive. Um, and, but they're worth every single penny. They're solid aluminum. They're a hundred percent sourced and made in the U S. Um, and they're fabulous. The, the DPNs have little rings on them that are phenomenal. Right. And so while I did drop a stitch, I'm going to, I'm just going to see if I can point that to side. I have that up and down and I'm shaking it and see how they're not moving because those little rings really hold your stitches on. So if you love DPNs, they're, they're amazing. Um, and they have like really, really sharp stiletto points, which is my favorite part of them. Okay. And you can buy signature needles directly from Signature as well. And they also have like a super fun um, uh, Tuesday night knit group. That's really fabulous. Okay. All right. So I, I did this sort of thing where I, I kind of um, put it down and then picked it back up. And so I have to figure out where, where do I need to be in order to work my next side. So my white yarn is right here. My blue yarn is right here my least represented color is blue. So while I would say I'm not supposed to flip my yarn, apparently I picked my needle up the wrong way, right? So I would just turn it around so that I'm ready to work my dark stitches. 
Okay, other questions? There are, uh, <laughs> there's a bunch. Um, they're all so great. Let's see, Roberta's asking, I knit combination continental. How okay. is this different? Um, so if you knit combination continental, I believe that means you are um, working your um, yarn over the opposite direction. But basically, here's the deal. You're going to you're gonna work it exactly the same way you would normally work it. Your, um, you just have to work in a one-by-one one rib. So do an inch of one-by-one one rib in your combination knitting. Pay attention to how you're doing your yarn overs, right? Or how you're knitting. Then when you do your first row, if your um, stitches are on back, your purl stitches are on backwards, right? Um, because you're knitting through the back loop, then your yarn overs, instead of going from the front to the back, will come back to front. If I'm not answer, if I'm not understanding your combination uh, knitting correctly, my most sincere apologies. Uh, and uh, if I've caused any confusion, I can again feel free to to pop in for a Tuesday help, and I'd be more than happy to give you a better answer. Okay, others. Lots of questions about what's the web, what is your website, and and where can I sign up for the classes? I found the calendar link to sign up for the, the help sessions on Tuesday. So I'm gonna drop that in the chat Perfect. shortly. Um, oh, Joanne, oh, go ahead, I'm no, so sorry. No, no, please, go ahead, Joanne. Joanne's asking, do you use an even number or odd number of stitches for single or two color brioche? So really the pattern's gonna tell you that. I find an uneven number um, with one selvage stitch at each end, I find an uneven number to be an easier number for two color. Um, and for a single color, it, do it doesn't matter. For a single color, I kind of wanted to um, have that sort of nice balanced look, right? But it would be even more balanced if you did that um, the, by adding one more stitch in the end. Um, so for one color, it doesn't matter. For two color, the reason it matters is where you drop your yarns in two color brioche really matters. With one dropping to the front and one dropping to the back, that's how they crisscross, right? And if they're not crisscrossing, then this selvage stitch will literally separate from the rest of it. So an uneven number allows you to drop one color to the front, one color to the back. An even number will require you to really pay attention to where the yarn should drop so that they're crisscrossing. That's my full answer to that. Awesome, thank you so much. Sure. Okay, and uh, just one other thing about uh, the website. Our website is like super uh, easy, um, user-friendly. Uh, and if you um, uh, just pop on there, the calendar has almost everything on it. Uh, this month for Yarnival, uh, which is um, an event that we started actually the, during COVID when, when Stitches um, stopped doing the SoCal, uh, and we've kind of kept it up uh, and it's it's super fun. So we have really great teachers. Um, we, the classes are very affordable. The teachers get the entire fee. So we're not marking the classes up at all. Um, and we have some really good ones left. So, so take a look. There's also lots of free stuff. We do tons of free make-alongs um, that are um, super educational. Uh, and um, we'll, we do knit-alongs over every long weekend uh, during the summer. So we knit three sweaters every summer. Um, so, so we would love it. And our main goal is uh, creating community both in store um, and online. And we would love to have you come and join us anytime. Um, and, uh, and we teach all kinds of fun stuff. The sweater I'm wearing is a Coco Knits Emma. And I'll be teaching an intro to Coco Knits method uh, next month. I'm just going to untangle my yarn here for a sec. Um, next month online. And I actually live in Oregon and our shop is in Southern California. So all of my teaching is online now. Uh, which is kind of fun. Okay, hopefully that all sort of makes sense. I want to, um, in our last couple of minutes, I want to take you into um, the pattern because I think it's important once you see how it all works to spend a minute actually looking at what the language looks like. Um, if you remember, and I also want to say that I, we have a, Hands on Knitting Center has a YouTube channel. Uh, I shoot the videos for the YouTube channel you never even see my face. Our goal is for us to get information to you um, really fast and really easy. So feel free to pop onto that as well. Okay, in our single color brioche, we were doing a knit one, right? 
and then a bark, right? Or a brioche knit, bark is a brioche knit. And then we were doing a yarn forward, flip one yarn over. So this is why I don't teach the language to start because you're like, what? But this is knitting my salvage. A bark stitch is a brioche knit, which just means you are knitting together the stitch and its buddy. And then yarn forward, flip one yarn over um, means my yarn comes to the front. I slip that stitch, giving it a yarn over, and then I come in and I bark the next stitch. And that's all that information means. So um, Nancy Marchant, who really sort of created the, um, the knitting language and her books on brioche are the best books out there. I highly recommend them. I know that she meant, um, good, meant very well in uh, creating this language. And it really does help later, but it makes it harder to learn, right? Because you're learning the language as well. But once you have the action down, then, under, then being able to connect the language to it makes it significantly easier. And then you can follow other patterns. And that's why I use her language in this pattern um, and not the buddies and marriage and blah, blah, blah in the actual pattern, because I want you to, after you've done this, I want you to be able to go out and follow other patterns. And this is the most common nomenclature um, for uh, brioche. Other thing I'll tell you is, in the rules for brioche land handout that I gave you, that we've mostly been working for, working with, there is a, um, a language, right, sort of explanation. So barks and burps and all of that are right in there. And then there are also a couple of pages on troubleshooting. Um, so some of the things that I've shown you on how to troubleshoot are right in there. So that information should hopefully help you. Um, I do have some good YouTube videos on this as well, if you need. Okay, so let's name what we're doing here then as we're looking at this. So in your brioche, um, on your, uh, I, I color coded it. So when you're on your dark side, you'll see dark, dark color, right? Um, and then your light side is in a different color. So this is a dark side, light color, and this is dark side, dark color just to help again a little bit with, with that, um, that muscle memory and remembering how you do this. So here we have slip one yarn over front, right? And then we have a burp, BRP, which is a brioche pearl and slip one yarn over front. And so I think I'm on a brioche pearl. I'm not, I'm on a knit still there. Let me see if I'm ready to do pearls here. No, here, let's just do this. We're gonna do this as we read it out as we go and then we'll do the next row. So I'm gonna knit one, I'm gonna slip one yarn over and bark. And I'm gonna yarn forward, slip one yarn over, bark. Yarn forward, slip one yarn over, bark. Yarn forward, slip one yarn over, bark. Okay, it's also single stitches get buddies, buddied stitches get merry. I know I'm knitting fast because you've seen this one so many times. Right, so yarn forward, flipping yarn over, bark. And there's always the fun thing that this next row is probably gonna be exactly the same. Yes, let's do this one really fast too. How we do it? Okay, there and then barking. Okay, so yarn forward. Flip one yarn over and bark. Yarn forward, flip one yarn over and bark. And when um, at the bark or the brioche knit, remember that is anytime she, so like if you're doing increases and decreases, it will uh, refer to a, a bark as a single stitch, right? So those two strands are so married, they are considered a single stitch. That guy drops back here. Okay, so now, we're gonna brioche pearl. So I'm in my dark, I'm gonna work my salvage stitch. My very first stitch is a yarn forward, slip one yarn over front, right? Because my yarn had to come forward for that first one and then it needs to end in the front in order to do a burp or a brioche pearl, right? From then on, my yarn is already forward. So I'm doing a, a um, slip one yarn over front. So then I'm ready to do a burp. 
And this is, I, I hope, I hope that not using the language, you're seeing how kind of useful that was um, at the beginning, right? But as you're doing it, you do want to, once you have the single stitches get married, married stitch, right? Double stitches get, uh, sorry, single stitches get buddies, buddied stitches get married. Once you kind of have that mantra down, then try and, and call the um, stitches what they are. So as you work patterns, it, it'll be easy peasy for you to sort of make that transition to doing it. Okay, but you have the access to the video, which is awesome. And you have, um, and so thank you again, Dana, for doing this. You have a fairly thorough handout. So please um, feel free to pop back and, and do those things. Uh, and I've also started my own um, uh, little website where I'll be doing teaching, uh, which is called um, Orca Fibers, uh, orcafiberarts.com. Um, so, and if you ever drop in on a Tuesday and you have questions about anything, just let me know and I would be super happy to help write uh, and, to, and to teach. And hope you, hopefully you have a chance to check out our Yarnival lineup because we have some really, really fun stuff still left in the, in the month. Okay, we Thank still had a couple minutes for questions. I ended early to make sure I could do that. Awesome. Yeah, there's there, there's lots of awesome questions and lots of very specific good questions. So I think a lot of people should sign up for your the Tuesday help sessions because so many folks are saying you're, you're a great teacher. They, they loved learning from you today. So I dropped the link um, just to the Hands-On Knitting Center website in the chat so folks can go to the calendar link and sign up for help sessions including i think today there's some availability even um uh, yes there I is and know. today it's at normally it's a two o'clock pacific time um but today we have a, a lot with yarnival going on so it's at three um and they're like little 15 minute sessions um but it's and we do that as kind of a courtesy but we're i'm available so just let me know if i can help you with stuff and uh, it, it's just our pleasure uh, to to be there for you. And if you're in Southern California, come see us. It's a really lovely, lovely little shop. So with awesome. super yummy yarns. Um, Carol's asking about binding off in brioche. Do we have time to yes. look at that? Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to bind off in pattern. So number one, in this, in the, in the, um, in the pattern that you have, um, you are, and I would bind off in the dark color. I'm going to show it in the light color, but in the pattern you have, you actually do a little bit of ribbing at the very end and then you just bind off. But otherwise, you're going to just knit, work your stitches right in pattern. Um, at a, sorry. And of course, like I just kind of threw this down, but I'm just going to, we're going to go with this for a second. So ignore the first two stitches. And you're just going to bind off, right? So you don't need to give the single stitch um, the buddy. You're just gonna work your single stitch and bind off, right? Work your double stitches together and bind off. And the only thing that I would say is um, that when you're binding off without those, uh, uh, it's gonna be a little tighter. Uh, so if you do your ribbing, bind off in the same size needle, if you, um, don't do your ribbing. You could go up a needle size in your bind off, just intentionally bind off loosely. So right, just pull up just a smidgy when you make those stitches um, to make sure that you're not making it pull in excessively. Uh, you can try um, uh, doing um, like a super stretchy bind off or something like that, uh, but it typically doesn't need that much stretch. It just needs to be a little bit looser. So just right in pattern. There we go. And again, do it in the dark color, right? Or if you're gonna do it on the light side, light color, do it on the light side. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, and then if you, I will say, if you look at the, like the Nancy Marchant books or um, uh, uh, even our, our YouTube videos, lots of different ways to cast on for it and lots of different ways to bind off if you're binding off in color pattern. Um, but in this, in this particular one, it was meant to be very simple. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Did you say and your website? Did you say Orca Fiber Arts? Yeah. So my personal website. It's still. Uh, it's. It's still in the process of being built. But I'm going to be offering classes just directly on there, um, as well, even outside of Hands On Knitting Center, and um, for stuff that that we don't necessarily want to do. Uh, and I'll be doing some series and things. But um, yes. Yeah, so that's Orca. So or 
uh, ORCA for Oregon and California because I kind of go between the two. Oh, very cool. Love that. Awesome. Okay. Well, there's so many fantastic, great questions, but we are out of time. So unfortunately, we're not going to get to them. Hopefully the recording is super helpful. I'll send tons of resource links. Everything that's been discussed today should be in this follow-up email. Um, and so if you have any questions for me specifically about our classes, anything logistical about them, you can get me at dneeld at primecp.com. Follow Molly on their, the Hands-On Knitting Center social media. There's a Facebook page. There's the YouTube channel. Molly's got her own Ravelry store. Um, and I'll include all those links in, in our follow-up email as well. And um, I, I think that's everything for today. I'm so glad so many folks are saying they loved the class, Molly. So thank you again very much for being with us today. Oh my gosh, it's totally my pleasure. And again, thank you for, uh, for having me and thanks for being here, everybody. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. All right, have a great rest of your day and, and enjoy learning brioche, everyone. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> thanks, Molly. Thank you. Bye-bye.